Howdy there, ladies and gentle tips. How you guys doing today? Finally doing a uh, another little uh, walk around the historical vid today. Well, this is going to be version 4.0. <laughs> so it turns out uh, the McDonald's Museum up the street's open. Uh, as I've mentioned in the previous vid, I wanted to do another run through on here because, as I said, over the years they add a lot more and more and more stuff. They always rearrange it, all kinds of stuff from all over the world. So we're going to do a 2020 version now. The last time I'd done this was the beginning of 2018. And um, and even then, they, uh, they had a lot of new stuff from the previous video, 2015. And uh, fun fact going there in 2015 with suburban delinquent that was my very first time meeting suburban delinquent so that was actually uh pretty cool and as i mentioned before i wanted to uh give my new little camera a little test or rooney and this is like the perfect thing to do because i'll be able to film a lot of the uh artifacts and stuff in a higher quality here we are ladies and gentle tips the very first mcdonald's location 1948 all right so here's the mural i think all my past videos i was using uh, my gopro for all this shit so probably get a lot better uh detail on this bad boy and yeah this is like the very first mcdonald's from 1948 yeah ride big bronco that's fucking cool she probably put your face anywhere near that. You probably get pink eye from all the assholes that's been on there. Literally generations of assholes. Look at this. This is supposed to be like the world's most detailed mural. Yeah. San Bernardino history. All right here we have an old car. It says here. I'll put it here so you guys could read it. Some buck tooth dick nosed asshole. There's Grandma seventy three. 1973. Man, I remember seeing him a lot as a kid. That looks like a scuffed pseudo Udo from Pokemon. This looks really cool. How did they make everything so creepy back then and just like think it was cool? All right, so we're here. We got a history sheet this time. 1940. Look, okay, that's what it looked like. And then 48. 51. 53. Oh, these are different ones right here. But these ones are here. It's crazy to think that this one location has all this history here. You can see the, uh, the old original sign right here. So I'm trying to see if there's anything new since the last time I've been here. So I remember this was here last time. Really cool little uh, diagram or model of the place. That was cool. Really cool little train. I don't know who this guy is. Maybe you guys know. One of your guys' long lost dads. An old photo of the store. So I remember people pointing out a movie to me that was on Netflix called like The Founder. And it showed a lot of artifacts from this place. And they actually filmed obviously a lot of it here because this museum I think is probably one of the more original ones of the history. These pins are really cool. See, I like a lot of old vintage. Oh, look at that dope ass patch and logo. That is so cool. Original coffee mugs from Famous Barbecue 1940. Just imagine all the lips that's been on that. Probably some chick having some coffee after she just topped off Dick McDonald. You guys want to know something funny? I don't give a shit about McDonald's. Like, to be fair, I don't even... I, I it, It's been, like, over a year since I even had it. But, like, the the lore, the, the old vintage stuff, like, right there, that's so fucking cool to me. Like, I like this stuff a lot. Imagine falling asleep in this place and then waking up to this thing above you. Depending on what generation you grew up in, you might recognize some of these toys here. From 1998 Lion King. Oh my god, I remember these. Holy shit. I think I had one of these, like that symbol one. 
So what they do is they have people from all over the world send stuff in, and then they have you send a picture with uh, your items, and they'll show who who gave you uh, or who gave them the stuff. So these pictures are basically uh, the people who donated the stuff, which is really cool. So they probably had a collection of it and whatnot over all the years. See, look, Dave and Devin, her toy collection. And then she gave it to the museum so we can all see it, which is really nice of her. How the hell did McDonald's survive with this fucking thing? Jesus, fuck. This historic site is a perfect place to store my memories. An old original uh, thingy. Oh, look, some old original uh, McDonald's ice cream machines. Those ones probably never broke. Hat from Ray Kroc's 80th birthday party. Belt buckle, 1976. Wow. That's actually really cool. Cool little diagram of the uh, building. Come on down to Bigger Town. Oh, I remember seeing these hats. Any questions on anything so far? I remember all this stuff. Sonic and Knuckles. That is so badass. 93. This is all original food right here, huh? Yeah, they're about as old as I've been around here, so two, three years. Oh, okay. But yeah, we have our own process of pretty much freeze drying and well, pretty much airing them out and then uh, that's sick. pretty much getting all the moisture out of there. Have you seen that video of the lady that has a a, a burger that's like 20 or something, something years old? Yeah. Uh, oh, how I don't know if she just left it out there or if she has her own way of preserving it. I don't think she's even trying to preserve it. I think she just she's just keeping it and showing how it doesn't decompose. Yeah, I know uh, what's what's the island nation? I, yeah, Iceland when they close their McDonald's, some place had like I think a city hall somewhere uh -huh. has like the last Mc, uh, McDonald's meal ordered. Oh, and I think it's about like ten years old now. Oh, that's cool. And they have it like in a little like this. Not like a, not like a glass case like we have, but kind of like a top removal one. Last time I was here, I bought, I was able to buy some uh, like Route sixty six pens. Are you guys selling any little trinkets or anything right now? Um, we have these magnets for right now and some stickers. Okay. We also have T-shirts and we just got some uh, some uh, logo sweater jackets. Oh, okay. Those are new. Oh, those are really nice shirts. Yeah. The jacket is just the same, has the same logo. So it's a zip up. This is a uh, this is a medium version. We have up to three X. Oh, is there a back? Yeah, and then the back. Oh, how much are these? Thirty five. I'm gonna buy one. Oh, Definitely. Okay. Do you have an XL? Uh, I can dig one up. Thank you, man. Yeah, yeah this is a new. I, you guys didn't have this last time I was here. Yeah. Well, the new. This is a new design. The old ones we had was more cartoony. Yeah. We were trying to go for a more artistic, more historical. 1970s McDonald's collection. And again, if you guys are older, you guys will notice these toys too. Oh, this right here is all fresh. I haven't seen this before. This was a little bit more... Um, Barren. There wasn't much stuff here before, so this looked really cool. Yeah, this museum's really filling out. All this, too, back here. I don't think this was all set up here yet. You know what I just realized? My mask is probably working as a pop filter. Poppity pop pop. I popped that pussy on Pleasant Street. Pop that pussy on Pleasant Street. I'm going to have to test right now if it's uh, doing that. These masks might come in handy for people like me that have to talk right into the mic. Look at this. Look at this OG ass Coke machine. I just love stuff like this. I love st Oh, that looks fucking terrifying. Imagine someone hanging that up over your head <laughs> and you wake up. Oh, look at this. 1940s dinner furniture soda fountain stool. Holy shit, who remembers Beanie Babies? 
I ain't gonna lie. I even had these when I was a kid. I even had one. Oh, fucking so dope. So dope. The old Mario stuff. Well, that's like modern. It's not even old. Oh, another cool thing they do here. Uh, I think I mentioned on my way here. Uh, they have people from all over the world send stuff in and they have a, uh, uh, sorted by countries and show you what kind of items are available at McDonald's in one country versus others. So that's another really cool thing. I think that's really, like this place is free. You just walk in and you can do stuff. Like, this is really cool. All right, let's see what we got in Brazil. Portugal. I never saw this stuff back here last time. Gotta go fast, dickhead. Is that a joint? Wait, what the fuck is that doing in there? It looks like a fucking J, dude. Oh man, I remember this stuff. There's so much nostalgic shit. See, I was a kid in the 90s, so all this, the Tamagotchis. I had Tamagotchis. Those are like fake ones. Doug. Oh my god, I didn't even know they had Doug shit. I would fucking buy those if I could buy those. Those are so cool. Doug was my shit. Oh yeah, look at this. all old. Remember Mac After Night right there? Dude, this stuff is fucking awesome. I remember all those kids crest trying to make kids fucking brush their teeth. Some plates from the 80s. Dude, seeing everything here like together is really fucking cool because I didn't even realize half the shit existed. Oh my god. See, that's what cell phones used to look like. This is recently put together. 80, so everything's 80s in here? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty dope. Everything from the infamous McDLT sandwich. Oh, I never even heard of that. Yeah, it was a short. It was a short-lived product. Like a BLT, but like their own thing. Yeah, you're like. Let me take out. This is kind of like the strange mechanic they were thinking for the sandwich. The idea was that, uh, if I can. The thing about old styrofoam, you want to be careful with this stuff. <laughs> oh, I. Uh is the idea was that when you open the burger or open the container one it would be one bun with the hot patty and another bun which would have all the cold stuff tomato cheese lettuce the sauces uh -huh. and the idea was that you know when you got a burger it was all soggy like yeah. because of the heat train you transferred to the other one so the idea was of this was that it would be a balance of the two so cold would stay cold hot would stay hot and then when you get the sandwich this would purposely be able to snap in the middle and you can stack it on top and now you have a perfectly balanced sandwich. Wow. But it was a whole gimmick thing. And also this was the time when people did not, environmentalists did not like styrofoam. So. So obviously that probably didn't make it yeah, live too long either. Yeah, they, a lot of environmentalists saw this as producing more wasteful styrofoam. Just for, just for a gimmick, they felt like. Yeah, but a lot of people remember like when. Like, bre Big Breakfast used to come this way with the hash brown containers. When Chicken Nuggets were first introduced, they used to come in containers like that. That's awesome. 80s was full of weird failures. They did the McPizza, they did the McFried Chicken, they did the McPasta. All those failed. I'm recognizing a lot of the uh, the 90s stuff over there. Like the Doug stuff and the Sonic stuff and oh, that yeah. shit. This I like is, all that stuff. This is our newest thing, which is the timeline that we added. Yeah, yeah. So it starts with the early prototype, which is very rare. Okay, this is from 1977. Go. 
and it goes from that all the way right now to 1990, early 1999 due to lack of space. Yeah. The hardest part was finding the bags and the boxes still, because you know, like you said, that was the first thing to go in the trash. Did you watch Doug? Yeah, that was my favorite show on the ABC. <laughs> I think it was ABC Network. No, that was Nick, Nickelodeon. Oh, really? I saw it on ABC. It was on Nickelodeon first, and then it went to ABC. Bang, she it. knows. Oh, yeah, right yeah. there. This is for the first Doug movie. Yeah, that's my... Grab my keys on Oh, shit, sorry. Oh, you okay? Yep, yep, yep. Beetleborgs. Oh, yeah. That's a short-lived show. I remember very vividly. Yeah, no, the Sabat... Uh, well, there was Beetleborgs and then VR Trooper, if you remember that. I don't remember that one, too. Yeah, that I did watch that, ironically. Yeah. It was kind of like... It was like Beetleborgs, but it was supposed to be take place like in the internet and stuff like that. Oh, okay. Virtual reality, that's why it was called VR Trooper. Dude, there's so much stuff here. It's crazy. Oh, here's the Japanese section. You know Japan got like really cool shit. Japan gets all the cool shit. Look at that. Fucking awesome. I remember these so vividly. I'm, it's just so cool how much of these I remember that I I forgot all about this stuff. This is so badass. It's crazy, over the last eight years, this museum's, like, went from, like, a little, like, you know, like a little shack with some cool little trinkets in it to, like, I'd, I'd call this a full-fledged museum at this point. There is so much cool stuff in here, it's crazy. You need that little connect forward, be a dope little desk piece, huh? Kill some time with your homie? That's dope. Okay, so this Juan Pollo Museum. So this museum is uh, owned by the founder of uh, Juan Pollo, and he's the one that put this together. So it looks like this is new. I've never been here, and all this too, so that's pretty cool. Deputy Sheriff San Bernardino. What the hell is this stuff here for? been to Amboy yet? Amboy? Yeah. What's that? It's, that's what the, the, the stuff in that case were. It's a, yeah, I was it's wondering a ghost what... town out, well, it's a living ghost town. It's a small abandoned town that used to have at one point a max population of, I think, 3,000. Oh. Now only five people live there. How far out is it from here? It's in the Mojave Desert. It's about, I think there's a postcard that kind of shows it. Yeah, it's about like, it's between Ludlow and Cadez on Route 66. Oh, oh shit, you got some Indian head. Yeah, these, some of this stuff is, some of it was a mixture of things that were found in some of the abandoned buildings. Oh, see, so yeah, like, that must be a metal detecting paradise out there. Yeah, because that town's been there since the 1850s, so you could, shit. there's also pieces of meteorite, because there's a giant crater out there. Oh, that is so, so might, awesome. If you have a magnet powerful enough, you can find some of the, you know, you can find some of those meteorites, like this one right here. And what, and what's this, the, the police stuff there, is that all from there too? Yeah, there's only one deputized. There's one deputized person in the town, <laughs> just because of how small it is. That is so awesome. And we're like, who who get, who got all this stuff and I'll uh, put it together? Uh, we did. It's just stuff that was scattered throughout Amboy that we came across, and then some of the Reagan and the Bush and mostly Reagan memorabilia because the last guy, the last the town was owned by a family. And the last guy who ran the town, he was a big Reagan fan. Oh. Like, from his Hollywood years up until he became president. So there's a lot of Reagan memorabilia that we gained because of that. Is that Pocket Watch, like, from the 1800s? Or is that old? It's probably from 1920, I think. Oh, okay. When we just, from what we got, one guy who was familiar with this stuff. Uh -huh. And these were more, like, more closer modern, like, between 1970s oh, yeah. to 1990s. It looks just like one of those old, uh, old-timey old pocket watches you see back in the day. And, yeah. and the Fifth Street Bridge, I'm trying to think of what that is. The actual, like, an, a modern bridge, or is that an old historic bridge that got demolished? I think it was, like, somewhat in between. Like, it was old, but not, like, vintage. Oh, duh, it says 20, 2008. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's what I say. Was, I don't it know. was there since, like, I think the 1920s, 30s, and it was just aged, so they decided to just tear it down and construct a new one on top of it that triangle or that uh yeah that triangle coins peak in my interest what is that oh this is more this is a little like uh token like a oh. bus oh okay kind of, kind oh. of like a bus train token okay that looks cool 
Yeah, the hole in the middle was to distinguish it from other currencies. And oh, also it was okay. also meant to help people who are blind to be able to distinguish it from like a penny or something else. Gotcha, okay, I'll I mean, If you look at coins in Japan, they're the same way. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Then yeah, we have a few of these uh like little Indian heads. These are those are very rare to come across. I very I've never come across one of those ever. Yeah, I think this one is, has a date on it. If I remember seeing it somewhere, I think it's too rusted to see. But I oh. think the guy said this is like from 1917. Yeah, those are like you know I think 20s, 30s even. Not, yeah, this is from 1907. Oh yeah, Indian heads from 1800s to 1908. I think it was. Yeah, it has a weedy in the back. Oh no, weedies were after that even yeah. I think. And then a little label Liberty version. Yep. Those are nice. Uh, I think her name was Columbia. Those are actually uh, pretty uh, rare coins right there to come across, too. Yeah, it's very, you can tell all of them are very itemized. Oh, yeah, you got a cool little picture right here. Yeah, that's pretty much the entire town. The only thing that's not in the picture, which is kind of like, it would be like right here. Okay. Would, is a little chapel. Okay. Because, like I said, at one point, because that's the school right there, it had, used to have a school where all you know you could find something in there. That's the only post office. That's the only gas station. These were little motels. And everything, they have electricity, but it's kind of unreliable sometimes. Gotcha. And, but, and all the water has to come from reservoirs. Gotcha. Because there's no running water system in there. That's uh, used to be Mr. Cora's office, the owner of Wampoyo. Uh-huh. And then when he left, it became kind of a small museum to his business. But that's going to be relocated, and we're going to actually convert that room we're going to make it look like the inside of, of the section of the original uh, McDonald's restaurant. And here we have the original McDonald's sign. Thing's been here forever. Oh god, there's a fucking bee in my face. Holy shit. This is what kids' toys were back in the day. Just slamming your head on metal fucking rails and just cutting your damn hands open. He told me that if I come back with a sticker of mine, I can put it right here on the window. And I thought that was really cool. So it's cool, even if you don't go inside, there's like, you know, a whole cool mural and stuff on the outside you can even check up. Oh, that's sick, the Texaco motor oil uh, thermometer? How cold is it? 60? Feels a little warmer than that. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. They got like businesses that are all local here. See, that's another cool thing. Look, they're actually like helping out the local community. That's a dope ass sign. I bet that looks cool turned on. So yeah, guys, that's pretty much all the museum. It's got a cool little, uh, batch of trinkets and stuff in the back as well like the, you know the mystery machine you've guys seen and all that another little look at the historic mcdonald's museum with a little bit more higher quality video well there she blows ladies and gentlemen hope you enjoyed the nice little history of some uh, mcdonald's action there there's a lot more stuff in there but it would take me uh a long time to film each and every object in there so i encourage you guys to go check it out if you're local or even you know even if you're like in los angeles it's worth the drive out here go check out mansion hilltop then you can go hit by the last drop liquor store buy you a couple pro club t-shirts and a fucking arizona green tea maybe a couple black and milds with the plastic tips because you know you're dirty like that but hey i hope you guys enjoyed the little video here it was mainly a test for my camera, but I also wanted to show you guys some new little history they have there. It's cool, I live right by it, so you know, I don't mind doing little update videos every couple of years there. It's fun, I love history, it's cool shit. And to finish the video, here's the house I grew up in the 90s while having all those cool McDonald's toys right there, the brick one. That's my old childhood house right there. On this beautiful street that I only lived in up until I was like I think 12 years old but that's gonna go ahead and conclude this little motor vlog adventure as always links will be down below if you want to support me in any way shape or form get one of my shirts keychain stickers etc and as always if you enjoyed the video don't forget to hit the out of that like button you guys have a, a real good day I'll see you guys later <laughs>